Hello and welcome to my Network Plus Practice Exam Part 2. As promised, I'm going to go through the rest of this exam. This practice test I got as a bonus material for buying my certification voucher from Get Certified for Less. If you missed that part that I shared, they have really good discounts. It's in part one of this video. Go check that out. But for right now, what we're going to do is go through the rest of these questions. Um, and I'm going to try to make this as helpful for you as possible. All right, so question 46. Which gigabit architecture uses multi-mode fiber cabling? This is one of those ones where you just have to know. You have to memorize the categories, to memorize the specification. The options are 1000 base LX, 1000 base SX, 1000 base CX, or 1000 base TX. Now, if you know anything about fiber optic cabling and you, you've looked at these standards, you know that these two are made up, uh, or at least I couldn't find them on the CompTIA official materials chart. This chart here will tell us that 1000 base LX is used with multi-mode fiber and single-mode fiber. 1000 base SX is only used with multi-mode fiber. So with that into consideration, I'm going to choose answer B as my option because it's the best option. So let's see if we got that right. It is B. 1000 base SX uses multi-mode fiber cabling. Nice job. Number 47, Microsoft's directory service is called what? Uh, I'm going to go with Active Directory. Yeah, that's that's A. The options are, sorry, the options are, I said I was going to read them all for you guys, and I want to do my best because not this may not, what is obvious to me may not be obvious to you. So option B, NDS. Option C, a DNS, also known as Domain Name System. Option D, Street Talk. And the answer is option A. Why? Because, because the other ones are not correct. Can't give you a good explanation for that. Number 48, which of the following is an example of a layer 2 address? 192.168.1.88, Kubernetes 100, cert for less.lan, 000d6048539e. This is a um, MAC address. It's written in hexadecimal. It contains uh, six bytes. Um, this is a URL. This is something else completely, uh, like a class or an energy drink. I have no idea what that is. It sounds familiar. I'm going to regret saying I have no idea what that is because I know it's actually something related to IT or cybersecurity. Anyway, this is an IP address. Answer is D, folks. The answer is D, MAC address, layer 2, MAC, Ethernet. Okay, let's look. Let's check. 48. Oh, I hate my taskbar. 48. Is D. 48 is D. A layer 2 address, it looks like that. A layer 2 address looks like that. That's why that's the answer. 49. Which of the following devices is used to prepare the digital data for transmission over the PSTN? What is the PSTN? I'm glad you asked. The PSTN is the public service, publicly, public, shoot, public service telephone network, public switch telephone network, something like that. The, the device that prepares the Digital data for transmission over the PSTN. Oh. Oh. The modem, perhaps? If I'm sending signals out, it goes from digital, it goes into the modem, and then it goes into my coaxial cable, which goes to the PSTN. So, maybe the modem. Uh, don't really know off the top of my head what these two are. ISDN modem, internet service, uh, uh, internet network interface card. I'm gonna go with C because I don't I don't have uh, any idea what those are. It's ISDN modem, CSU slash DSU modem or NIC. Okay. Forty nine is C. A modem is allows a digital data to travel over analog lines. It converts data from digital format into a format suitable for an analog such as telephone or Radio. So we got it right. It's C. All right, cool. Number 50. Which protocol used on the internet gives each computer a unique address? TCP IP, NET BEUI, DLC, or 802.11? 802.11 is the basis for most network protocols, such as Wi Fi and Ethernet. 
No, that's NATO 203. It's just Wi-Fi. This is Wi-Fi. This is downloadable content, like for Red Dead Redemption. This is something weird. Unique identifier. This is the answer. A. TCP IP. Ta-da! We got it. All right, awesome. 51! Question 51! If you're still watching this video, then you must be enjoying it. So please subscribe and leave a comment and like the video because, you know, why not? What do port numbers give in the IP header? In port numbers, identify which interfaces on a router should receive data in and which interfaces should forward data out. Port numbers identify the sending and receiving processes between two hosts. Port numbers identify which connectors on a switch should receive data in and which should forward data out. Port numbers identify the path of routers between any two hosts that need to communicate with each other. I'm going to go with A because it's about interface. No, interfaces. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's processes. It's identifying processes more than interfaces. That's not really correct. Uh, not It's not connectors. Yeah, I'm going to go with B, even though I don't like the way it's worded. 51 is B. Yep, 51 is B. Good job, us. I'm not, I'm not looking at 52. I'm not looking. No, I saw it. Dang it. I tried not to. Okay. Carrie gets a call from her friend Mary. Mary wants to know if this thing called NAT NAT is on her network. Mary is running a Soho router. What statement is most appropriate for Carrie to explain to Mary? Don't worry, Mary. You don't need NAT. Okay, well, what is NAT? First of all, NAT is network address translation. That means that your router doesn't tell the public what the IP address of your host devices on your home network are. Basically, it, mm, it gives you an alias to communicate on the public network so people don't know who you are. Okay, that was bad. I have to configure your computer to work correctly and implement NAT on your PC. Don't worry, Mary. Most Soho routers come with NAT. You will have to replace your computer, <laughs> D. You you will have to replace... Ma Mary, do I have NAT? Carrie, you will have to replace your computer. Uh, I'm going to go with C. Don't worry, Mary. Most Soho routers come with NAT. Answer C. That is correct. Answer C for $1 million. 53. Carrie, our IT professional, is working in a data telco closet in a remote office. She suspects an, a connectivity problem is related to a broken RJ45 plug on a patch cable that connects a switch to a patch panel. She needs to replace that connector, but she forgot to bring an extra patch cable. She decides to install a new RJ45 connector to replace the broken connector. Which tool must she have in order to do this? Wow, that took a long time. Choose two. Uh, we will need... So, so, so I read that and what I didn't process. What are we, what are we fixing? A patch cable, a broken RJ45 on a patch cable that connects a switch to a patch panel. So we'll need a wire stripper and we'll need a crimper. The options are punch down tool, crimper, wire stripper, cable tester, multimeter. I mean, a cable tester would be nice. A wire stripper is not essential either. The main thing you need is the crimper. That that's you can't do that by hand, really. I mean, theoretically, I guess you could, but. The crimper is the most important, and then the wire stripper. I would also say, a, I would argue a cable tester is important, but we'll go with B and C for 53. Let's see. B and C. All right. Cool. 54. Which of the following is a single sign-on authentication method? The options are CHAP, CHAP, IPSEC, IPSEC, security, EAPOL, which is something to do with Wi-Fi. SSL, secure socket layer, which is a more to do with the transport layer. Um, Kerberos, it's Kerberos. I'm going with E, I can't, I can't think, brain broke. 54 is E, Kerberos is a authentication protocol which provides a secure single sign-on based on a trusted third-party mutual authentication service. Its default port is 88, and I just looked at the next answer, that's awesome. Carrie is helping a friend, Natalie's printer isn't printing the document, Natalie just sent it in what order should Carrie perform the listed steps? Oh, geez, this is a lot of reading. Option A, follow the OSI model from bottom to top. Check possible causes. Send a new document to the printer. Determine if anything has changed on her network. B, send a new, send a new document to the printer. Follow the OSI model. Okay, we're just going to do process of elimination based on the first step because I can't handle all this reading. So, 
she's trying to print. The first step should be determine if anything has changed on her network. Follow the OSI model to check possible causes. Send a new document to the printer. Yeah, that's that makes sense. I would say D is the most correct, and I'm not going to read all of those. I'm sorry. 55 is D. Okay. I hate that question. By the way, in the CompTIA practice exams, there's some really long questions. Uh, if you want to see me do one of those tests as a video, there are tests that are actually from CompTIA. If you want to see me do one of those as a video, leave a comment down below saying so, okay? Then I'll, I'll do it. Michael, number 56. Michael suspects that a machine on his network with the host name GetCert4 is issuing excessive broadcast traffic on his network. What command can Michael use to determine the host's IP address? Netstat, ipconfig, nslookup, ifconfig, or iptables. This would be nslookup. Uh, Netstat would show open connections, I believe. ipconfig would show IP address information. ifconfig would do the same thing as ipconfig, but on a Linux and a Mac. iptables, I'm not sure if that actually shows iptables or not, but the answer is C. The answer is C, 56. The answer is C. 57. Michael is with a small ISP. Several of his customers are complaining about slow response time from some websites. Michael suspects that network congestion may be the cause. Which CLI network utility would help him determine where the congestion or issues are occurring? Oh, uh, OTD, oh, sorry. Uh, the, the options are MDF, MSDS, ESD, or OTDR. So I'm going with OTDR. That, that's, that's, that's just what that is. That, that's what it does. I, I, I can't explain it. Natalie is inspecting the facility, ensuring that all devices that spray chemicals that put out fires have class C. What type of device is she inspecting? Cable stripper, fire extinguisher, smart jack, wire crimper. Uh, spray chemicals that put out fires. I'm going to go with fire extinguisher, option B. Honestly, I'm a little disappointed with this test. Um, I mean, I guess it, it, it was free. So, you know, what do I expect? But uh, I was hoping for harder questions. Um... Gary wants to use hardware or software that captures packets to decode and analyze packet contents over her LAN. What are the best tools Carrie should use? Uh, protocol analyzer, patch panel, tone generator, or fire extinguisher. <laughs> um, protocol analyzer, option A for AD is correct. All right, 81, at what point At what point is a packet considered to be a giant? It becomes a giant when it exceeds the Ethernet's maximum packet size. It becomes a giant when it exceeds 1400 bytes. It becomes a giant only when fragmented pieces and the too large packet size are reassembled. It becomes a giant once a VLAN tag is added. I think it's option B, but I want to say that was different. It was like 1471 or something. Um, I thought it was like 1471 or 1472 was the was the giant size but um it could also be oh geez it could also be a i guess um i think this is just it's just depends on your perspective but i'm gonna go with 81 answer b and it's a okay number of number of received giant frames that exceed the maximum ieee 802.3 frame size on the port for example any Ethernet packet that is greater than 15, 18 bytes is considered a giant. Okay. Oh. Oh. The Ethernet's maximum packet size, not the port's maximum packet size. Okay. Well, why didn't you just say 15, 18 then? All right, whatever. I'm counting that as a miss. That's a miss. That is nine wrong out of 81. Definitely a passing grade. Carrie is working on an SLA and wants to ensure all highly available servers are available. What percentage of the time should specify in her SLA? Ooh, highly available. I believe that's 99.99. It might be 99.999. It's definitely not 99. It might be 99. Shoot. I think it's C. 82. 82, I'm going with C. And that is wrong. It's D. 99.999% is the percentage used for high available servers on a network, and SLA is service level agreement. Now, that part I did know. 
Carrie, the IT manager, is working on her SOP. What term should she use to describe the average amount of time that will pass for a device before a failure is expected to occur? The keywords here are average amount of time before a failure. That would be ETTF, PCL, MTA, or MTBF. It is MTBF, mean time between failure. 83, I'm going with D. That's correct. 84, Carrie San team wants to run storage area network protocol that runs on top of TCP on an existing twisted pair Ethernet network. They want to maintain the lowest cost of the most inexpensive protocol. They should use. <laughs> That's so confusing. All right, it's a SAN. Runs on TCP, twisted pair Ethernet. They want to maintain low cost, inexpensive protocol. So I'm going to say it's fiber channel over Ethernet because they have Ethernet. Pretty sure it's B, 84. Oh, sorry. The options are fiber channel, fiber channel over Ethernet, Internet SCSI, InfiniBand. Let's go with B84 is C, Internet SCSI. Why is it C? It doesn't say, but I was wrong. So I forget what exactly this is. It just sounded familiar, so I guessed. I guessed on that one, guys. Um, you know what? Let's add that to the list of things to review because that may be important. Um, fiber channel over Ethernet versus iSCSI. Like, what even is iSCSI? Um, a differential backup covers what data on a system? A differential backup includes only data that has changed since the last backup. 85B, let's go, oh, 85C. It includes data that has changed since the last full backup. Okay, fair enough. I guess I'll add that to the list. Uh, Definitions of different types of backups. That's that's fair. I mean, you know. Okay, there's a lot of stuff, man. In planning for a disaster recovery, what is the ultimate goal? Uh, the protection of people's lives, but no, seriously. The preservation of critical data, the continuation of the business, the management of damage, the protection of infrastructure. The ultimate goal? The ultimate goal is the continuation of the business. 86 is B. 86 is B. Carrie attempts to determine how available your Linux systems are and needs to find the current system uptime. What commands should she use? The current system uptime for your Linux system? Oh, crap. I don't actually know. And I'm embarrassed that I don't know. Because I've been learning a lot of Linux, but I haven't booted in Linux for too long. I think it's A, but it could be C. That sounds like Cisco. That sounds fake. I'm going to go with A. So, no, no, 87 is A. Let's go. Yes. I knew that the whole time. Each managed object on a managed device using SNMP is assigned which of the following? Object identifier, TCP UDP port, process ID, or inode number. The answer is object identifier A is for 88 is correct. The object identifier is an address used to uniquely identify managed devices and their statuses. 89, Carrie wishes to maintain a 99.99 .99 availability rating. What is the maximum amount of downtime she can have per day to keep this rating? Really? That's a question. 99.99 availability. Um, I know how to do this on a calculator. Like, do we get a calculator on the test? I don't know. What is ah oh ah uh um eighty nine I can see 
from did I I don't know. I'm over it. A nine's option B, eight seconds. Okay, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Question ninety. Oh, I have to ah dude, I have to mark as wrong, bro. Like I don't think I even <laughs> have been keeping track of which ones I actually got wrong. But it's okay. Which IP fees uh, which IPv6 address is valid? 2031, 20, 2001, 2031, ODB eight, eighty seven six mush mush. This is one, two, three, four. I have no idea. This has an H in it, and this has a G. A, B, C, D, E, F. It only goes to F, so I know those are wrong. Uh, this one has five characters in one of the octets. So that's definitely wrong. So it's got to be D. 90 is D. 90 is A. What the frick? 130B6? Are you serious? How is that correct? How is that valid? Oh, because he made a typo. Okay, thank you. Thanks for that typo. So, so this is actually the correct one, right? It's it matches. See, I'm not crazy. He put the wrong thing, so that's not wrong for me. That's I that's correct for me. Carrie has been tasked to configure the network to pass IPv6 traffic through the IPv4 network. Which method should she use? Dual stack, 6 to 4 tunneling, NAT PT, or NAT overload? Uh, 6 to 4 tunneling, B for 91. Correct! Which statement about IPv6 and routing protocols are accurate? Choose two. Huh? Hold on, I need to do soda. Okay, I'm back. Here we go. Oh. Which statements about IPv6 and routing protocols are accurate? Choose two. Um, EIGRP v3 was developed to support IPv6 routing. OSPF version 3 was developed to support IPv6 routing. Loopback addresses are used to form routing adjacencies. EIGRP, OSPF, and BGP are the only routing protocols that support IPv6. RIP and G was developed to support IPv6 routing. I have no idea, but I'm going to guess that it's A and D. A and E, why not? 92. 92, the answer is B and E. I was close. I guessed A and E, it's B and E. All right, so that's wrong. That's okay. We got seven more questions left. If you have made it this far, please like and subscribe to this video and comment down below what made you watch this far. Was it the riveting mental stimulation of practice questions or something else entirely? Please, leave a comment. 93. What automatically assign itself an IP address within the following range? 169.254.01 to 169.254.255.254 with a subnet mask 255.255.00. A PIPA, DHCP, shh, or static? The answer is a PIPA automatically picked IP address or something like that. Um, and I know that's the answer because I know that's the answer. 93 is A. It's correct. 94, Carrie is setting up network security and she wants to make sure a person cannot deny her. So she took a specific action. For example, if Natalie sends a message, that message can be traced back specifically to Natalie. What is Carrie making sure is implemented? Authorization, encryption, non-repudiation, or integrity? The answer for this one would be non-repudiation um, because that means that you can't repudiate. Mm -hmm. So 94, 
94 is C. That's my answer. It's your answer. Put it in the comments below. Leave a like. Subscribe. 95. Carry needs to limit the amount of broadcast traffic on a network and allow different segments to communicate with each other. Which of the following options would satisfy these requirements? Limit broadcast traffic. Allow different segments to communicate. I already know what I'm thinking. Add a firewall and implement proper ACL. Add a router and enable OSPF. Add a layer 2 switch router and create a VLAN. Add a bridge between two switches. The answer is C. Because switches, switches limit broadcast traffic by creating, actually no, well, and creating a VLAN would limit broadcast traffic because creating a VLAN separates broadcast zones and also separates collision domains. Uh, a bridge between two switches That actually works better, I think. It's 95 is D. I don't know. I'm just trying to finish this test at this point. 95 is C. Okay, my my first answer was right, and I changed it because I'm brain dead. All right. What does LAN stand for? If you've made it this far, if you've watched this video for however long it's been, how long it's been, 40 minutes. If you've watched this video for almost 40 minutes, Put your answer for question 96 in the comments below. And if you get it correct, I will shout you out in the next video. Number 96, what does LAN stand for? Question 97, Carrie just configured a network consisting of five computers. Four computers are running Windows 10 Professional. One computer has been upgraded from Windows 10 Professional to Windows Server 2019. All the computers are connected to a switch, which is connected to a router, which is connected to the internet. Which networking model can carry support now that she could not support without the upgrade? No idea what I just read. <gasps> okay. <laughs> okay. So she upgraded one computer from Windows 10 to Windows Server. So that makes me think, out of the options hybrid, Client server, Starbus, and Ring, that she would be able to support client server because she now has a server, right? Um, they're all connected to the internet. So, it, you know, all these other ones could still have been used before. So, 97, I'm going to say, is be delicious. 97 is B. Got him. Nice. 98, what utility would you use to view current connections and active sessions and ports on a computer? current connections and active sessions. Netstat, NSLOOKUP, PING, IPConfig, or DIG. Current connections would be Netstat and active sessions and ports. It would also be Netstat. Maybe PING as well, or um, IPConfig, sorry, Netstat and IPConfig. I honestly don't know what DIG does, except I know that it does the same thing as NSLOOKUP, but I think it's a little bit better than NSLOOKUP somehow. So I'm going to go with A and D. A and D. 98 is A and E, Netstat and DIG, and they don't explain why, but they just tell me so. All right, that's fine. I guess I need to use DIG. Which of the following utilities can you use from the command line on a Linux system? to see a list of the installed network interfaces along with their current status and configuration. A list of installed network interfaces, um, IF config, so that would be interface configuration. E, 99, 99 is E. C and E, okay, well they, you, you didn't say pick multiples, you just said what one. Which of the following? Okay. IP address and IF config. Carrie wants to see the network path and how long it takes to get www.getcertifiedforsure.com. What commands will allow her to do this? Choose three. Uh, trace route, trace route, path ping, ABC. It's not these. It's got to be A, B, and C for 100. 
A, B, and C. Look at that. Path being trace route and trace route. Okay, cool. So I don't know where this goes. It's kind of weird that... Huh. Seems very sus. Public service announcement. Do not cheat on your Network Plus exam. Just study for real. You know, learn the stuff because you're going to need you're going to need to know it when you get to your job. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Um, I do need more subscribers. So if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see me make a video about a uh, practice exam from CompTIA, leave a comment down below and I will definitely do that for you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.